everyone welcome back to gk today i am nuzat sana and in this video i'll discuss today's top current and static general studies questions for upsc prelims examination 2022 onwards and these questions are framed keeping in view both the factual as well as analytical aspects of upsc prelims exam also i would like to inform you that these questions are part of gk today's upsc prelims test series which is available in gk today android app and the test series for 2022 prelims examination comprises total of 7500 questions divided 2500 questions on current general studies and 5000 questions on static general studies and the series has started from may 2021 and it will end with upsc prelims examinations 2022 so if you wish to access all questions of gk today upsc prelims test series you may subscribe the test series in the app so now without wasting any further time let's get started okay this is your 8th lecture and now let's start question number 1 which of the following terms pertain to international transport infrastructure so you have to basically tell that which of the following is related to international transport infrastructure okay first is carbon border agreement so the european union is imposing a carbon border tax on the imports in order to force the emerging economies to adopt cleaner or you can say non fossil fuel based practices to manufacture their goods so this is actually conceived as a means to nudge the developing countries to adopt less carbon emitting means of production but developing countries including india are opposing it now let's understand why it was in news recently what happened is European Union has introduced new legislation named as Fit for 55. Why to cut down its greenhouse gas emissions by 55 percent by the year 2030 and net zero by the year 2050. So that's why it has introduced a potentially adverse policy called as CBAM, means Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism. which is mean to discourage the consumers from buying carbon intensive products okay and also it encourage producers to invest in cleaner technologies fine now why india is concerned about it because it is europe's third largest trading partner and it does not have its own carbon tax or cap so this cbam is a cause of concern because india's goods trade with European Union was seventy four billion dollars in the year twenty twenty. So basically, this is applied to the energy intensive products that are widely traded by European Union, such as iron, steel, aluminium, cement. Then there are fertilizers and many other electrical products. Okay. So obviously, this agreement is not related to any type of transport. This is wrong. Second term is Ashgabat Agreement. This is actually an agreement to develop an international transport corridor to facilitate the movement of goods between the Persian Gulf and Central Asia. Okay. So the basic aim is to develop the shortest trade route between Central Asian countries and Iranian and Omani ports. And talking about Ashgabat, it is. the capital and largest city of turkmenistan which lies in central asia so this agreement was initially signed among uzbekistan turkmenistan iran oman and qatar in the year 2011 and later other countries also joined it and talking about india regarding this india will also be enabled to utilize the existing transport and transit corridor to facilitate the trade and commercial interaction with the eurasian region okay so this is right and third is lapis lazuli corridor so this is a kind of international route that connects afghanistan turkmenistan azerbaijan georgia and turkey okay so this is also a transport route here correct answer becomes only 2 and 3 fine next question Which of the following is are members of the International North South Transport Corridor or INSTC? So you have to tell who are the members of INSTC. 
first of all let's talk about this particular corridor this is a 7200 km long multimodal transport network that connects india middle east russia central asia and europe so basically it is the ship rail and road route for moving freight between india middle east russia central asia and europe okay so this enhances the accessibility to the land locked central asian nations now let's see who are the members of this particular corridor india iran russia turkey azerbaijan kazakhstan armenia belarus tajikistan kyrgyzstan oman ukraine and syria so these are the member countries also do remember that bulgaria is an observer member fine so pakistan is not a member and lebanon is also not a member correct answer becomes only 1 and 3 now what are the objectives of this particular corridor basically to increase effectiveness of transport ties in order to organize goods and passengers transport fine then second objective is to promote access to the international market through road rail sea and air transport then third objective is this provides security of travel and safety of goods and last objective is harmonization of transport policies okay now let's talk about some of the advantages of this particular corridor the most important advantage is bilateral trade increases then it connects india to russia at competitive rates then third is it eliminates the usage of reefer containers and this route is 30% cheaper and 40% shorter than the traditional one okay so these are some of the advantages now next question consider the following cultural regions of india bundelkhand bagelkhand dwars mewat which of the following is the correct order of the above from west to east so you have to arrange these in format of west to east okay first is bundelkhand it is a hilly region in north central india that stretches across uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh and as we know the jhansi in uttar pradesh is the largest city of this region okay second is bagelkhand it is located at the east of bundelkhand and it also stretches across parts of madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh you would have heard about satna it is located in this region okay then third is dwars this is an alluvial flood plain region that stretches across west bengal and assam and from this region darjeeling is important okay and last is mewat it is a region in northwest india that stretches across haryana and rajasthan fine so the order becomes first mewat then bundelkhand then bagelkhand and last is dwars okay so this becomes 4 1 2 and 3 correct answer is option number b now let me tell you few things first of all what do you understand by the term culture this is nothing but the way of life is shaped by geographical topography climate and language on the basis of few things like what are the food they eat then what type of clothes they wear their houses languages festivals music etc fine so from the world perspective major cultural regions are first is western culture second is anglo american culture third is russian culture fourth is latin american culture fifth is islamic culture sixth is sub saharan africa then there is australia european culture southeast asian culture ninth is sino japanese and last is indian culture so these are some of the cultures in the world okay and talking about india particularly let's talk about some of the cultures from india first is north indian cultural region which is also called as aryan culture 
इन दिस वेरियस रीजन कम्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल कश्मीरी लद्दाखी मराठी बंगाली गुजराती एसेट्रा ओके देन सेकेंड इज नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न कल्चरल रीजन और यू कैन से ट्राइबल कल्चर अगेन इन दिस वेरियस कल्चरल रीजन कम फॉर एग्जाम्पल अहोम्स बुद्धिस्ट सिक्किम नागा गारो खासी एक्सेट्रा एंड लास्ट वन इज हियर आई एम राइटिंग इट साउथ इंडियन और यू कैन से द्रेविडियन एग्जाम्पल्स आर तमिल तेलुगु मलयालम इंडो पोर्तुगीज एक्सेट्रा फाइन सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द कल्चरल रीजन ऑफ इंडिया ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Which of the following diseases has have been eradicated on global levels as of 2021? So you have to identify which of the following diseases are no more in the world. First of all, let me tell you that eradication and elimination are the two different things. Eradication refers to complete and permanent worldwide reduction to zero new cases of the disease, and elimination means. reduction to zero or a very low defined target rates of new cases in a defined geographical area this term is important so elimination requires continued measures to prevent reestablishment of disease transmission okay so here we are talking about eradication not elimination fine first is smallpox it is a viral disease caused by variola virus it is fatal in 30% of the cases and officially declared to be eradicated in the year 1979 so this is correct second is polio it is a viral disease caused by polio virus and it has not been eradicated till now its eradication is still underway afghanistan and pakistan are the last remaining regions in the world where white polio cases are still occurring okay so this is not right third is rinderpest it is also an infectious viral disease that affects cattle and in the year 2011 the united nations fao means food and agriculture organization the headquarter of which lies in rome italy has declared the disease to be eradicated so this is also correct and last is dracun culiasis or you can say it as guinea worm so this is a disease caused by guinea worm which is a nematode and it is a neglected tropical disease and is not included in the eradicated diseases okay so correct answer becomes only 1 and 3 now last question with reference to various rebel groups in news around the world which of the following is our correct matches let's talk about them one by one first is fact nigeria front for change and concord in chad so this is a political military organization that seeks to overthrow the government of the north central african country chad and it was created in the year 2016 so country is not right so this is wrong second is farc colombia FARC or you can say it as Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia is a guerrilla group in Colombia and it is a far left rebel group that has been involved in the Colombian conflict since the year 1964 this is right third is Shining Path Algeria the Shining Path is the communist party of Peru and not Algeria it is a terrorist organization there following marxism leninism maoism and gonzalo thought so this is wrong and last is karen national army myanmar this was in news actually also the karen national union and its armed wing karen national liberation army is an ethnic rebel group in the myanmar and recently they captured a military base in eastern myanmar okay so this is right and correct answer becomes only 2 and 4 so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session If you want to give any suggestion, feedback and review, you can tell us in the comment section. Definitely we will try to implement that and we will meet again tomorrow with five more new and interesting questions. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK today. With this Meenu Sarsana signing off.